President-elect Donald Trump has been trending all week since Americans cast their votes to bring him back to the White House. Today, the Justice Department unsealed criminal charges in a thwarted Iranian plot to kill Trump before this week's presidential election. Meanwhile, racist text messages received by kids, college students and other adults in more than a dozen states have sparked federal and local investigations. A criminal complaint filed in federal court in Manhattan alleges that an unnamed official in Iran's paramilitary Revolutionary Guard instructed a contact this past September to put together a plan to surveil and ultimately kill Trump. Well, we know that two of these people are already in custody. These are these are people who were working with uh, what the prosecutors say is a uh, an IRGC uh, operative, essentially somebody who uh, recruited these folks when he was serving time in U.S. prison and. Uh, uh, the, the, the leader of this pl uh, alleged plot, according to prosecutors, his name is uh, Farhad Shakari. He is 51 years old. He is back in Iran. The plot reflects what federal officials have described as ongoing efforts by Iran to target U.S. government officials, including Trump, on U.S. soil. <laughs> Heavy security, including what appeared to be a robotic dog, was seen outside Donald Trump's Florida residence days after the Republican president-elect recaptured the White House with a sweeping victory. Tens of millions of Americans looked past his criminal charges and divisive rhetoric to embrace a leader who, if he carries out his campaign promises, will test the limits of presidential power. Donald Trump is going to be inaugurated on January 20th. He's going to hop in a car, drive down Pennsylvania Avenue, swing the door open of the Oval Office and he's going to immediately sign executive orders to go back to the effective Trump policies like remain in Mexico, allow us again to, to build the wall at the southern border. The speculation around how this will play out for the rest of the world still continues. Experts say Donald Trump's election victory could shift interest rate policy in the U.S. as his promised plans risk higher inflation, which could ultimately have implications for Canadian rates and the loonie. The United Nations has been planning for the possible return of Donald Trump and the cuts to U.S. funding and engagement with the world body that are likely to come with his second term as president. We are ready to deal with any president of any country uh, that is a member state of the United Nations. And um, uh, of course, it's not for us to decide who is going to rule uh, the United States. We recognize the United States is a fundamental partner of the U.N., but obviously we are ready uh, to work in all circumstances in defense of the values of the Charter and of the values of the U.N. Meanwhile, in the U.S., federal authorities are investigating a string of racist text messages sent to people in more than 20 states. The texts address people by name, telling them they have been selected to, quote, pick cotton. Authorities say the messages appear to be targeting black and brown people, and they started going out the day after the presidential election. It's not clear who sent the messages. Not surprising. If you can recall, when Trump was in office before, we've seen an increase in racial hate crimes. In one week alone, attacks on Latinos in El Paso, African Americans in Louisville, and the Jewish community in Pittsburgh, just in a one-week span, with, with mass shootings. And so we are not surprised that this, this is taking place. And unfortunately, we are in for four years of this. According to reports, a spokesperson for Trump's campaign said it had absolutely nothing to do with these text messages. According to reports, the president of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People said the messages represent an alarming increase in vile and abhorrent rhetoric from racist groups across the country who now feel emboldened to spread the hate and stoke the flames of fear that many of us are feeling after Tuesday's election results.